assalam alaikum students today our uh, topic of uh, discussion is diffusion of gases through the respiratory membrane so uh, firstly what is a respiratory unit respiratory unit includes uh, uh, respiratory bronchioles alveolar duct atria and alveoli and uh, there are 300 uh, million alveoli in uh, the two lungs uh, having uh, each alveolus a diameter of uh, 0.2 millimeter and uh, there are um, uh, capillaries around uh, the alveolar wall uh, where the gaseous exchange occur and uh, these uh, capillaries are in close proximity to the alveoli so Further, the gas exchange between the alveolar air and the pulmonary blood occurs through the membrane of all the terminal portion of the lungs, not merely the, in the alveoli themselves. All these membranes are collectively known as respiratory membrane, also called the pulmonary membrane. And uh, this is uh, the diagram of a respiratory unit. You can see the terminal bronchioles, respiratory bronchioles, and uh, then alveolar ducts and uh, alveoli and atria and alveolar sacs this whole is your respiratory unit now uh, what is uh, the respiratory membrane you can see here there is a first layer on the left hand this is uh, the fluid and uh, the surfactant layer and uh, then is uh, the alveolar epithelium and then is the epithelial basement membrane and uh, you can also see here uh, the interstitial space and uh, then is uh, the capillary and uh, these are uh, uh, there are actually total six layers and uh, you can see here uh, the red blood cells so the respiratory membrane uh, consists of uh, a layer of uh, fluid lining uh, the alveolus and containing surfactant that reduce the surface tension of the alveolar fluid the alveolar epithelium and the epithelium uh, basement membrane and a thin uh, interstitial space between the alveolar epithelium and the capillary membrane and then is a capillary basement membrane and then capillary endothelium so these are the six layers you can see here also as well the capillary basement membrane and capillary endothelium a capillary endothelium in red and um, uh, the overall uh, thickness uh, of uh, uh, respiratory membrane averages 0.6 micrometer and uh, 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 and as little as 0.2 micrometer and the average diameter of pulmonary capillary is only 5 micrometer so the red blood cells squeeze uh, uh, through the uh, pulmonary capillaries and they uh, also touch the capillary wall so that the oxygen and carbon dioxide need to not to pass through the significant amount of uh, plasma as uh, they diffuse between the alveolus and the red cells this too increases the rapidity of diffusion and factors that affect uh, the rate of uh, gas diffusion through the respiratory membrane uh, number one is uh, the thickness of the membrane then uh, surface area then uh, diffusion coefficient of the gas and then partial pressure uh, difference of the gas between uh, the two sides of the membrane so uh, thickness firstly uh, as the thickness increases for example in fibrosis uh, the uh, diffusion decreases and uh, the second is uh, the surface area uh, surface area when uh, there is a decrease in surface area for example uh, uh, during emphysema when uh, there is a uh, uh, 
collisions of alveoli or, or uh, there is a decrease in the number of alveoli the surface area is decreased and uh, this decreased surface area also decreases the diffusion and then uh, third is uh, the diffusion coefficient uh, diffusion coefficient actually depends on uh, uh, the uh, gas solubility in the membrane and inversely on the square root of uh, uh, gases uh, molecular weight so therefore for a given uh, pressure difference carbon dioxide diffuses about 20 times as rapidly as oxygen oxygen diffuses about twice as rapidly as nitrogen so uh, all the weight matters regarding uh, when we discuss about diffusion coefficient and uh, the pressure difference across uh, the respiratory membrane when uh, there is more pressure difference uh, in uh, the alveolar uh, uh, side uh, uh, in case of oxygen when there is more pressure of oxygen in the alveolar side it moves from alveoli to blood and uh, likewise um, uh, opposite is the case with the, the carbon dioxide uh, carbon dioxide moves from uh, uh, your blood into the alveolar bat so it is a uh, uh, vice versa it all depends upon the pressure the pressure of oxygen is more in alveoli while the pressure of uh, carbon dioxide is more on the tissue side and uh, diffusion capacity uh, the diffusion capacity of um, uh, uh, of for oxygen and resting is 21 ml per minute and uh, the mean oxygen uh, uh, pressure difference across the respiratory membrane during normal quiet breathing is about 11 millimeter of mercury multiplication of this pressure by diffusing uh, capacity 11 gives a total of about 20 uh, to 30 uh, ml of oxygen mm, uh, diffusing uh, through the respiratory membrane each minute and uh, this equals at which the resting uh, body uses oxygen so change in uh, oxygen diffusing capacity during exercise during strenuous exercise or other conditions that greatly increase pulmonary blood flow and alveolar ventilation and diffusing capacity for oxygen increase in young men to maximum of about 60, 650 ml uh, per minute uh, per uh, millimeter of mercury which is uh, three times the diffusing capacity under resting condition which is you know 21 ml per minute per millimeter of mercury this increase is uh, caused by several factors number one opening up of uh, many previously uh, dormant pulmonary capillaries or extra dilation of uh, already uh, open capillaries therefore increasing the surface area of the blood into which the oxygen can diffuse and uh, number two a better match between uh, the ventilation of alveoli and uh, the perfusion of alveolar capillaries with the blood called uh, uh, ventilation perfusion ratio we will uh, discuss uh, this concept in uh, uh, the coming lectures so these are the two factors uh, which increase uh, the diffusion capacity of oxygen during exercise and diffusion capacity of carbon dioxide the diffusion uh, uh, the diffusing capacity for carbon dioxide has never been measured because of the following technical uh, difficulty carbon dioxide diffuses through the respiratory membrane to rapidly that the average uh, uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the pulmonary blood is not far different from uh, the partial pressure of uh, uh, alveoli the average difference is less than one millimeter so uh, the diffusion uh, coefficient of uh, carbon dioxide is slightly more than uh, 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 20 times uh, that of oxygen so one would expect that it uh, can be 400 to 500 ml per minute per millimeter of mercury during exercise and uh, uh, that is uh, the value of uh, during rest and 1200 to 13, 1300 uh, minute per millimeter of mercury uh, is for uh, exercise you can see here 
in case of carbon dioxide at rest 400 in red and uh, about uh, 1200 uh, in blue but uh, these changes are very little in case of oxygen and carbon monoxide so a uh, measurement of uh, diffusing capacity the carbon monoxide method uh, the oxygen diffusing capacity can be calculated from measurements of alveolar PO2, PO2 in the pulmonary capillary bed and uh, the rate of oxygen uptake by the blood. So uh, there is a difficulty in measuring uh, uh, the diffusing capacity of uh, oxygen directly. So there is an indirect method uh, by measuring uh, the diffusing capacity of carbon monoxide. So Firstly, the diffusing capacity of carbon monoxide is measured uh, and uh, the method, the principle of carbon monoxide method is the following. A small amount of carbon monoxide is breathed into the alveoli and the partial pressure of uh, carbon dioxide in the alveoli is measured from appropriate alveolar air sample. The carbon monoxide pressure in the blood is essentially zero because hemoglobin combines with this uh, gas so rapidly that its pressure never uh, has time to build up. So uh, the partial pressure of uh, carbon monoxide in the blood is zero uh, because it has no time to build up. Therefore, uh, the pressure difference of carbon monoxide across the respiratory membrane is equal to its partial pressure in the alveolar air sample. Then by mating the volume of uh, carbon monoxide absorbed in a short period and dividing uh, this by the alveolar carbon monoxide partial pressure, one can determine accurately the carbon monoxide diffusing capacity. Two, convert carbon monoxide diffusing capacity to oxygen diffusing capacity. The value is multiplied by a factor 1.23 uh, because the diffusing co coefficient for oxygen is 1.23 times that of uh, uh, carbon monoxide. Thus the average diffusing capacity for carbon monoxide in young men at rest is 17 ml per minute per millimeter of mercury and the diffusing capacity for oxygen is 1.23 times this or 21 ml uh, per minute per millimeter of mercury. So you have to multiply 17 with 1.23 because uh, the diffusing capacity or uh, uh, is uh, actually the, the diffusion capacity of oxygen is 1.23 times more. So the diffusion coefficient of uh, uh, oxygen is 1.23 times that of carbon monoxide. So this is all about uh, uh, the respiratory unit, the respiratory membrane and uh, the diffusing capacity of uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide and how we can measure the diffusing capacity of oxygen by measuring uh, uh, carbon monoxide method. And what are the factors that affect the rate of gas diffusion? There are four factors. So this is uh, the important lecture and this uh, diagram is actually very important. Uh, this one. So you have to memorize this diagram. <clears throat> 